Amen. 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 Day or three since I've been up here, I've been trying to hold the back door down. <laughs> anyway, Jimmy Hornswoggle, we got me up here tonight, so we can consider it a blessing to be back at God's house. Yes, truly good. I know we've got a lot of prayer requests, and we'll get to those after walk, after the service, and what well, we've been trying to do it, but uh, we do feel as we'll go to the prayer line right about now, so if you would, if you're very ahead, we'll pray over the service. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to get to be here again tonight, dear Lord God. We thank you for all the brothers and sisters in Christ that made it, the ones that are watching on their phones, computers, whatever, Lord. And we pray also for the ones that couldn't be here tonight, dear Lord God, Brother Dwayne and his family with his friend that passed away up with the brother. I just ask you to be with that family also, Lord. And have your will and your way in service, Lord. And help each and every one of us that's a born again, blood bought child of God that love you and serve you, Father. And help us just to thank you for your mercy and grace. And I pray for the ones that don't know you, Lord, save them. Lord, help them see the need of Jesus Christ in their heart, soul, mind, and body before it's everlasting too late. But in your holy name, ask this prayer. Amen. Church, you might got a song or a testimony for the Lord tonight. I'd like to thank the Lord for my salvation. Thank you for your love and mercy and grace each and every day. I know it's been strange times we're going through, still going through them, but Hold on to him and he'll bring us through. That's right there. Amen. Well, I thank the Lord for being here for everything he does for me and my family. And, you know, listen to a man I'm playing through today, and he said, you know, if we keep our minds on the Lord and what's in the Bible, then, you know, we know what was coming because it told us in the Bible what was coming. You know, said, let's not feed in all the negative things that's going on in the world. The Lord knows we can all feed into them. Yeah, yeah. Let's just let our light shine for him, you know. Yeah. God be the glory for everything. You know, the Lord's going to come out and shine. You know, I, I kind of got into a little bit, not a, a total lady. I wasn't going to argue with her about it, but she told me that, you know, I was silly for believing in the Lord and believing in something that wasn't even real. And I said, you know what? You know, I'm not going to argue about anything. I said, you know, I know I've been saved by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You know, and I know He died for your sins and my sins. You know, and I feel sorry for you. I'm not going. I'm not going to argue with you, but I'll let you know I feel sorry for you. Yeah. And and I do. I want you. To, I want you. To, Lord knows who that enemy is. And I want you to really to pray hard for her because, you know, I don't care how much the world tells me. Whatever they tell me, make fun of me for believing in the Lord. It's not even a fourth of what they did to Jesus. Amen. That's right. You know, if we can't stand up and take little knocks and bruises from every now and then, you know. We're sad, sad thing. My salvation is filthy rags. It's if it wasn't for him, you know, I know where I'd be. I don't even have a chance at it. God's been good to all of us. Amen. Amen. Better than we deserve. Amen. 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 Hey, Jonah, will you sing the new one that you did Wednesday night? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't here Wednesday night. I didn't get to hear it before. <laughs>
Thank you. See you as I speak later. Keep telling you. Pretty song, thank you, church. Amen. That song right there, my dad loved. He loved that song. He really did. It's a pretty song. Anyone else tonight, a song or testimony? I'll be much of a part of Brother Jim. Well, if you was here this morning, this is your own fault. You're listening to me. He told you. <laughs> For the ones of you that wasn't here, I'm sorry nobody told you. <laughs> If everybody will, uh, go ahead and be turning over to Exodus chapter 14. I did make a, a lot of notes for myself because, to be honest, God was giving it to me quicker than my little brain would work. Amen. And uh, I didn't want to forget nothing that he wanted me to say. And I'll be honest with you too, my prayer today and, and since yesterday when he told me I was going to be teaching is... And I was a little selfish. I said, God, let it go how I want it to go. And that is, I get out of your way, and I'll let you lead, and you let the lesson come forth like you want it to. Yes. <clears throat> but he called me yesterday morning and asked me if I would teach, and I was outside doing some yard work, me and John was, and <clears throat> we'd had a, a battle going on and right in our front yard for a while. And one's of you that knows where we live and has been down through there, you have seen it. It is called the construction of the bridge right in front of our house on the 107. Praise God, that is done. It is gone. It is out of there. We have no more red lights in our front yard. But uh, we also had a guardrail put up in our front yard. And that really wasn't something I liked. Anybody that has a house, I'm sure you wouldn't like it for a guardrail to go up in your front yard either. And I had it in my mind that I was going to let them know how I felt about it. And I was going to tell them they weren't going to put that guardrail there. And I, 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 I. <laughs> and I did talk to one of the T-Dot guys. And I told him that I didn't much like the idea of the guardrail going up. And I would like a phone number of someone who I could talk to. And that's as far as the conversation went. That's all Jimmy got to do. But I'm going to, I'm going to teach a little bit today in my message that I hope I can get across and John looked at me funny when I said this, but it's called God's in the guardrails. And here's what I mean by that. If you'll get out of God's way Amen. and you'll let him take control, Amen. he will handle every situation Amen. for you. Amen. And before I go any further, I will let you know that I no longer have a guardrail in my yard. <laughs> I, went to, I got called into work Friday. I had the guy that was doing the construction come over, and he said, don't be mad at me about your guardrail. I said, well, I'm not mad at you. You just told to put it there. He said, well, I'm fixing to take it up for you. I did not ask him why. I knew exactly why. <laughs> Pulled back in that afternoon, stopped, got out to go get my mail, and here come the T-Dot guy pulling in my driveway. He said, wanted you to know that we didn't think you needed that guardrail in your yard anymore. There was no use for it. I wouldn't want it in mine either. Did not ask him why. I knew exactly why the guard was coming. Now, I said all that to say this. If we will get out of God's way, no matter what the situation is, He is still in control. Amen. Amen. Still in control. There are many stories in the Bible that if we read, it explains how He was in control of every situation. Amen. 66 books. If you want a, an example... Just flip to any chapter. He was always in control. But I have came to give you a few examples. <clears throat> and like I said, I've written down a lot of stuff because I, I want to make sure that I get his word out, not mine. My hope tonight is through this lesson, you'll be uplifted in a time of uncertainty. A word, as Daryl mentioned a while ago, it's a, a fearful time. It's an uncertain time. A lot of people don't know how to act right now. It is very hard for us as we walk past each other to not just give each other a big bark. That's not what we are bred when we come into being a Christian. As a Christian, we show love and, and hugging is love, right? Amen. But I hope that you can be uplifted by this message. I pray that it will give you encouragement knowing that we have hope in something greater than us. Amen. And please.
please understand what I just said. There is something greater than us. I pray that we all leave with a greater desire to lean on God Amen. more and less in ourselves. Amen. And that's that's what our lesson's about tonight is, is uh, letting God be in control and getting ourselves out of control. And some examples I want to give you before we get into the reading of us being out of control. And there have been a lot of talks past two to three months about these subjects. I'm not here to give you my side of the story. I want to give you God's side of the story. But one of the ways that we've been out of control is this pandemic. The government's tried to do this. We've tried to do that. <clears throat> Many of us have been trying to figure out how to take care of our family, how to take care of our friends, how to take care of our church. What do we do at work? How do we keep our work associates safe? How do we keep our church associates safe? We started out by asking to go every other pew. You know, we was concerned. We wanted you all to be taken care of. We have been trying to figure out how to do what God already knows how to do. We got in God's way. That might be why this pandemic went on for three months. If we would have got out of his way and let him step up, maybe, just maybe, this pandemic would have already moved out. Another way that we've been out of control, racism. I ain't going to call it protest. I'm not going to call it rioting. Because who cares about whether it's protesting or rioting? The bottom line is racism is a problem. Amen. It's a problem because we have not gave it to God. Because God is love. Amen. And love is greater than hate, right? Amen. So if we would just turn this over to God and quit trying to solve it ourselves, we wouldn't have a racism problem. There's always going to be whites that hate, hates blacks. There's always going to be blacks that hates whites. But we can show them that God is love and we love them. And we can be there for them. <clears throat> this is going to be where I get in trouble at home. So y'all pray for me starting at this point of the lesson. Because this is where I start teaching on John. <laughs> Comfort zones. And... I am not just teaching on John, I'm teaching on myself. Because it was very easy for me yesterday when Dwayne called me to think of about 10 guys in this church, probably more, who would have been way better at getting up here and doing this than me. That you all would have loved to hear way more than Jimmy. You'd see enough of me. You can see me every time he's coming in his doors and go out. I'm sick of Jimmy myself. But here I am. So comfort zone. Somebody clapped. I appreciate that. <laughs> Comfort zones. The word comfortable means that uh, means affording or enjoying contentment and security. Amen. Think about that for a minute. Why do we want to be in a comfort zone? Why do we want to stay in a comfort zone? Because it's security. We feel safe there. And here's the second definition that really, really stuck to me, and here's why. Because John song she sung tonight. Free from vexation or doubt. Now think about that for a minute. When you're in your comfort zone, there is no doubt that what you're doing is okay. You know that you have control, but that's the problem. That's why we're out of control, because we ain't giving control to God. Amen. Amen. Now, Exodus chapter 14, and we're going to start at verse 13. Some of the examples I was telling you this Bible is just full of stories about God being in control. You've got Daniel in the lion's den. Think about that story. He was in control the whole time. He knew what was going to happen. Those guys wanted to throw Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel didn't know what was going to become of his life. He didn't know if he was going to be eaten or not. Those guys didn't know what was going to happen. God knew what was going to happen the whole time. Amen. There was never doubt in God's mind. He knew exactly because he had control. Yes, the prodigal son. The son took his and took off. Father didn't know where he was at and what was going on with him. Son didn't really even know what was going on. He ran out of money, didn't have a clue what he was going to do for his next meal. God had control of that situation. He knew he was going to bring his son back around, bring him home, and he was going to have a testimony. Amen. Fed the 5,000. Who would have thought he could took just such little bread and little fishes and, and fed so many? David and Goliath took somebody so little 
and slew somebody so big. You put you put a little five foot feller up against me, the people that don't know me, of course, into a boxing ring, they're gonna say, well, that guy's gonna slow me. Well, they just don't know me because he's gonna look my hind end probably. <laughs> but they do the lot. And then where we're at next is Moses and parting of the sea. Moses couldn't part that sea. We're going to read about that in a minute. And then another story we're going to talk about is when Jesus calmed the storm. Amen. He was always in control. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today, for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more, forever. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Now it says the Lord shall fight for you. And I thought I had when I seen that. It says when you truly understand that he's in your corner. You know when, you're, when you have a boxer and I'm not a boxer by no means. When you have a boxer they've got their people in their corner wiping the blood off of them whatever it may be. Jesus is in your corner. He's, aware of, he's wiping sweat off of you because you're trying to do too much work. Let him throw the punches for you. God is in control. Amen. When you truly understand that he is in your corner as your greatest defender, you will no longer seek to rescue yourself. Amen. Amen. So please think about that. Verse 16. Is that, where, is that where I was at, Randy? 15 or 16? 15, excuse me, back up to 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honored upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud of darkness to them, but it gave light the night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Now, Moses was not able to reach out his, his rod and, and make all that happen because Moses wanted to. True. Moses followed God's command. Amen. God told him to do it. Yep. That's part of letting God be in control. We must listen to God. Amen. The only way you know what God's saying is you've got to be close enough. Amen. Joe, you can't go outside of the fellowship hall and hear what I'm saying in here. You've got to get a little bit closer. You've got to be within earshot, right? And that's what Moses was. He, he was listening to what God wanted. Verse 22, And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea, upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians, through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they dragged them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his stream, which the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Now, once again, Moses had to be listening to know what to do. Amen. 
Because Moses, if he had been doing what Moses wanted to, he'd have been going down the edge of the sea, right? Probably got killed. But he stopped and he listened. And then once he listened, that's not the end of it. We've got to keep listening. Because God's got something else for us to do. It may be out of our comfort zone. We may have to go out in the dry seabed with water all around us, never knowing when it's going to crash down. But we also got to know that God is our security and he will take care of us Amen. no matter what. Amen. No matter what. You all want to turn to Mark chapter 4. chapter 4 and starting in verse 35. Say amen when you get there, please. Amen. 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 And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Now a little back story, Jesus had been preaching right off the edge of the, the, the banks to a multitude. And he, he tells them, he said, let's go over to the other side. I got some more to tell you, but I, I want this to be told to you all. Let us pass over to the other side. Verse 36, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Amen. How many of you have ever said that? Amen. God, don't you care what I'm going through? Amen. Don't you see what I'm having to handle right now, Lord? Right. Amen. Have you ever had a bad week at work? <laughs> Let me back up. Have you ever had a bad day at work? Amen. Well, that's what I had this week at work. If it could go wrong, it did go wrong. Whether it was my fault or whether it wasn't. And there was some of my share that was my fault. What I like to think about the whole week was, Lord, you got to handle this because I'm too little for this. Amen, brother. And I'll tell you what, it all worked out. Everything's good. I may go in money and it may all fall apart again. But I have, I have to let him have control. Amen. Because Amen. I'll make a mockery of it. Amen. We ask God too often, God, don't you care about us? Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the winds and said unto the sea, Peace be still. Amen. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. Amen. Now going back to John. And then I'll hit myself again, too. That song she sung tonight, it scared her to death to even try. It was out of her comfort zone. Not, not only was it a song that she's not accustomed to singing as far as a type of music, but it was also out of a key that she ain't even used to singing in. Maybe I'm partial, but I thought she blew it out of the water. Amen. And she did that because she let God take control. Right. right. Teach on myself for a second. I ain't much of anything, but I can go home tonight knowing that I did what God asked me to do. Amen. I could have easily said, Lord, get Randy. Lord, get Daisy, <laughs> Wayne, Jimmy, Daryl, AJ. I could have asked for any of them. And he would have probably let us do it. Because he would have said, Jimmy, if you ain't going to do it, I'll get somebody that will. Amen. I'll get somebody that will stand up for me if you won't do it because I need people that's going to serve me. Amen. Thank God that when we're so fearful, when we don't have any faith, he's still in control. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55, and then I'll be done. I told AJ this would be somewhere between five minutes and an hour. I don't know where I'm at, but probably closer to five minutes. 
Isaiah chapter 55, and we're going to start in verse 6. Is everybody there? Amen. Amen. Uh, chapter 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And I had to read that a couple times. Amen. We better be searching out God while it's still an opportunity. Amen. 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 And you look that however you want to. There are some countries that does not have the opportunity right. to search out God. That's right. There might be a day that me and you do not have that opportunity here in the U.S. Right. There might be a day that me and you don't have that opportunity because we're very bad help. We don't know what's coming down our pipeline. Right. We better search out God while we can. Amen. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your ways or not your thoughts, excuse me. Let me back up, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. I am so thankful that my thoughts is not what he's thinking. Because if they was, this world would be in way worse shape than it is now. Because I have no clue how to fix anything. All I know how to do is ask God for help. And that's when my life starts going around. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things where do I sin. God is so big, and, and he, he can handle anything. When you know God is in control, and I'm closing with this, when you know God is in control, even of those things that appear to be out of control, and if you'll think probably sometime this week you've had something in your life that you just thought, how in the world is this going to end up? When you know God's out in control, even when things appear to be out of control, that's when you are able to move through life, benefiting from his blessings of assurance, peace, and self-control. I love you. I hope he's got something out of it. If not, I did. Yes. I can tell you one thing. Teaching scares me to death. Even the teenagers, and I asked some of them, they didn't know why, but I asked some of them, you going to be here tonight? Because I'll be honest, I really needed to see their faces tonight. Because they give me a lot of strength, and they don't know that. But they give me a lot of strength, and it helps me to look back and see them when I'm teaching. Because I know that they're praying for me, and they've got a heart of gold. Yeah. But <clears throat> when I teach, one thing that it does for me is it draws me closer to God. Because you've got to dig a little bit. Amen. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, if you start digging a little bit, even if you can't teach him, it'll help you a lot. Amen. God bless you. Love you all.